Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi and here we are in AITS Select Series uh, from a long pending problem that has been requested by many students about a ice with a cavity floating in a oil and water immiscible liquids and uh, then the ice over a period of time is supposed to melt and we are supposed to investigate the change in the height levels of the oil and water. Okay, so this is a very interesting JE advanced level concept and we'll top it off after the solution with two practice problems that will enhance your understanding of the situation. Okay, so here we move ahead. Before I go forward, okay, right, last time uh, the video that I have uploaded, I have put a target of 1.5K likes and also 200 subscribers. So uh, you have done very well with the 200 subscribers thing. So thanks a lot uh, for propagating the channel, right? I would request you to do the same with this particular video. Okay, so for this video, we'll try to put up a target of 1000 likes and a 300 subscriber thing. Okay, so once that any one of these two targets is reached, I'll come up with another beautiful video that will help you uh, in JE preparation. Okay, so how to logically solve this problem. So if you have not done uh, seen this problem before, please make sure you pause the video here, try to go through it, attempt it for five to 10 minutes and do come back for the uh, concepts, explanation and the practice problems at the end. Okay, so let's move ahead. An ice block having cavity in it is floating at interface of oil and water. Specific gravity of oil is 0 0.6 and ice is 0 0.9, obviously measured with respect to water. H1 and H2 are the heights of water and oil column. After some time, the ice melts completely and both oil and water form uniform immiscible layers. Area of vessel is finite, that is this bottom area, and ignore overflow, okay? And the four options, one or more than one may be correct, is about whether H1 increases or decreases, or whether H2 decreases, or the total height H1 plus H2 increases or decreases. So you have to mark the appropriate answers from the information given with respect to the specific gravities. And also, if you carefully observe the shape, there is no inherent uh, uh, proper shape that was mentioned is some cavity, some part of it is in the oil side and some part of it is in the water side. Okay, so keeping all this in mind, let's try to resolve the issue. So we'll go with the concepts first. So first simple concept is the level rise. So if you see the rightmost diagram, wherein you initially measure the level of certain liquid, uh, and then place an object in it, it's intuitive for you to visualize that the level obviously rises based on the volume of the body submerged. And if the base area is given as A, then the height rise H would be easily recorded as V submerged of the body that you introduced divided by the area of the base of the vessel. And for a given area, let me imagine you keep uh, doing this experiment for different, different objects of different V submerged, Right, you may have objects which are floating also. We can have a partial volume, but V sub will be the submerged part volume. Then for a given area, you can always uh, make a point that H is proportional to the V submerged. So for different objects, same vessel, directly measuring V sub will give you the measurement for H. So concept one, number one. So let's move on to concept number two. Again, familiar to most students. I just wanted to revise it very quickly. Imagine you have an object of certain volume rho one, and you have two immiscible liquids, non-mixing liquids, rho two and rho three, and some part of the object is in rho two and some part is in rho three, and you're supposed to calculate the buoyant force on the block. Then it's obviously equivalent to the density of the upper liquid into volume of the body submerged in the upper liquid. I wrote it in the green form as rho two V two, plus density of the lower liquid into the volume part of the body submerged in the lower part, rho three V three into G, right? And V two plus V three is the total volume of the body. So this, if you remember, each term is not the force on the block by each liquid. If someone had asked you, what is the force exerted by this green liquid on this block, it won't be the first term. So there is an error here and there is an error here, but the summation works out. And this concept has already been done in one of our previous videos. So 
returning subscribers would be understanding this. So in case you are new, I would urge you to check this particular video on that concept of calculation of buoyant force when a liquid doesn't surround a solid. Okay, even though the picture here is slightly different from the present concept, it covers the uh, situation very well. Okay, link of this video is in the description below or on the i button above. So please do help yourself. So let's move on to the concept number three and the last one before we move on to the solution. This is a very famous situation of ice actually floating in water and we are asked whether the level of water will increase or decrease. Okay, so quickly, if you divide it into multiple stages and the left side, if you have a situation where the water level was initially at this level and ice has not yet been introduced to it. So once you introduce the ice and it floats with some part inside and some part outside, the volume displaced here, that means of the water, decides the level. Okay, so the volume displaced of the water level decides the height rise here. Whereas once the ice starts melting stage by stage and you reach the final stage, the final level here is decided by the volume replaced of the water. That means you can actually directly jump from this stage directly to this stage by saying, okay, fine, this ice, I would uh, melt it in some other vessel and pour that water form into this. That is called volume of water replaced. So next time, whenever someone asks you to judge whether the uh, level changes from this stage to this stage, you always take this left side one as the reference, initial level, even before the experiment started. So if volume displaced and replaced are compared and whichever one is greater or lesser, that decides whether the level from this stage to this stage changes. Okay, And in this famous problem, you know that it doesn't change because of the uh, displaced water and replaced water being the same, but our problem is slightly more complicated, the present one in the question. Okay, and also during this melting of ice, you should realize that mass of ice that is melt melting should be equal to mass of the water replaced. You should not equate the volumes, it's the mass that would be conserved. Okay, right. So keeping all these concepts in mind, let's apply them in the solution. Okay, right. I tried my best to keep everything logically in one page, so it's slightly easy. Um, a compressed solution. So what we'll try to do is uh, you follow my lead instead of reading things on your own. Okay, so I'll explain step by step. It will be very logical. Okay, so now to the left top of your screen, left top of your screen, I'm assuming a simple situation where the ice with cavity has not yet been introduced to the uh, vessel and you have oil on the top represented by yellow line and the uh, water at the bottom. I am measuring the heights initially as H1 naught and H2 naught with nothing that is pleasant. Now I would realize that uh, there are two stages to this uh, problem. One is when the ice is introduced, the H1 naught and H2 naught change to H1 and H2. Then the ice melts, then this further changes to H1 prime and H2 prime. I repeat, originally it is the H1 naught and H2 naught. Once you introduce the object, they become H1 and H2. And once that object, which is ice, melts and forms water, and again you measure the final heights, it is H1 prime and H2 prime. Our job in this problem was to compare these numbers, the H1 and H1 prime and H2 and H2 prime, and also their summation. H2 naught is introduced by us for our comfort. Okay, right. Now you quickly realize that V1 plus VC1. Now look at the right most of your screen to point out this diagram and let me explain what are the values that I have written here. So the ice with cavity has four different important volumes. V1 is the material volume of the ice. Ice exists here. Okay, I couldn't shade it in the diagram because it makes it clumsy. You should visualize that this is all ice material and this is cavity. Subscript C represents cavity. V1 is the material part of the ice, which is involved oil. VC1 is the cavity part of the uh, uh, volume, which is in the uh, oil. And V2 is the material part of ice in water and VC2 is the cavity volume that is inside the water level. Okay, so these are the four volumes. Now you realize that from the original nothing diagram to this diagram, obviously the oil level will rise because the V1 part plus VC1 part is the displaced volume of the oil. Because of the occupied uh, nature of this volume, this, this volume occupies that oil's position, the oil rises and H2 obviously should be more than H2 naught. 
okay so how much if someone asks you is the increase of the oil level remember proportionality of the base area of the vessel is removed i would directly calculate th things in terms of volumes so v1 plus vc1 which is this summation increases the oil level and therefore once this ice completely melts and this becomes the final diagram at the bottom this oil is not going to get replaced because ice melts and forms water and not the oil so this stage the amount of oil will go back to the original h2 not so from h2 not to h2 it increases and h2 to h2 prime it goes back therefore it decreases okay so the value of height given in the problem during the melting of ice is going to fall so we have solved the oil level which was a basic and easy problem the slightly tougher problem is to solve the water level and we'll do it step by step now if i use the free body diagram this is a very important step because i'll be using it in the levels later so if i take the free body diagram i already told you the way to write the uh, buoyant force is equal to the weight because it's floating weight of the object is due to the material part okay only ice has the weight so rho ice into v1 plus v2 obviously i can cancel g on both sides so rho ice into v1 plus v2 which is the mass should be equal to the buoyancy force divided by g buoyancy force of this would contain two terms one from the oil part which is rho oil into v1 plus vc1 these two and rho water which is v2 plus vc2 okay right and then you realize that the numbers that were given 0 0.9 0 0.6 and 1 if you carefully write them down don't manipulate just leave it like that and from here we will try to understand the importance of these numbers okay now carefully observe on the right most of your screen that the ice part once it melts it replaces the water into this and changes this level okay right now whether it increases it or decreases it we have to judge it okay so how much mass of the ice is going to melt with whatever is this left hand side will be written here that is the mass but volume of that uh, water that would be formed would be the mass of ice divided by the density of water because remember mass remains the same so can i say this green one is the mass of water form yes but if i wanted to convert it to volume i have to divide it with rho w okay which makes it a 0 0.9 because this is 0 0.9 that ratio given 0 0.9 times of v1 plus v2 is the volume of the water that would be formed okay now whether this volume was more or less than the displaced volume remember water height rose because of v2 plus vc2 now i have to compare it with 0 0.9 into v1 plus v2 and that is where this equation comes into picture beautifully because on the left hand side you you have that 0.9 into v1 plus v2 which is this comparison and on the right hand side you have a v2 plus vc2 which is this one plus some number this yellow one so you would argue that this v2 plus vc2 is a lesser quantity as compared to 0.9 times of v1 plus v2 so that's what i have written v2 plus vc2 versus 0 0.9 into v1 plus v2 you will have this one as the winner so finally the value of the water replaced would be greater than the volume of the water that was displaced originally that was the war between h1 and h1 prime which h1 prime wins over h1 okay so by how much does it win that is very important for the summation okay so let me sum up the things carefully by pulling this up okay right and i want the reference diagram so i'll get a replica of that diagram so on your screen right now you have the final stage diagram here and this is the initial stage diagram to have everything on the screen now we have decided that h1 prime is more than h1 remember this h1 prime is more than h1 and that was decided by the 0.6 times of v1 plus vc1 by how much was this one more than this one by how much was the lhs more than this one that was a comparison right fight this is the difference number that number i have put it here okay so that value by which it is more is 0.6 times of v1 plus vc1 also we decided that h2 prime is less than h2 this oil part that that difference was decided by v1 plus vc1 itself the, the cavity volume plus v1 here itself decided how much the oil got displaced so now you would say this 
more value is only 0.6 times of a number by which the less value dominates. So in the summation, H1 plus H2, obviously the total sum falls. I repeat, H1 is more than H, H1 prime increases by this number. H2 prime decreases by this number. You could see decrease dominates the increase. Therefore, the summation falls. Okay, so this is one of the logical ways. I Because I was explaining it slowly, it takes a lot of time. But once you get the knack of solving such problems, you will be able to understand it and uh, put it in on paper in the exam much more quickly. Okay, right. So taking all these things into account, let me mark the final answer and then we'll move on to the practice problems. So height of the water column increases, height of the oil column decreases, but the sum actually is dominated by the decrease as I evaluated. So B, C, D is the correct answer. Okay, right. So this is a very good candidate for the JE advanced style of question making. Okay, so let's move on to the practice problem number one, right? So again, similar situation I picked up. I just I'll answer in the physics surgery quickies. You can comment your answer below along with the timestamp. Please don't forget the timestamp, okay? So that I can comment back whether your answer is right or wrong, okay? So wood, water, and ice, you can read the situation on your own. One or more than one may be correct. So let's move on to the problem number two. So slightly more complicated, but this is actually uh, a question uh, that is modified from a previous JE paper. So this diagram is very familiar to people, and but it is slightly modified because there is a coin which is made of sugar and sugar starts melting. And he's asking the plot of H, which is the water level with time, and plot of L, which is the depth submerged of the wooden block. Okay, so this is L, this is not visible here, so please, uh, make uh, yourself comfortable with this. Okay, so once the two practice problems are over, so let me remind you the target for the next video upload, something very nice will come up is either the thousand likes for this video. Please do give it a like once you gain something from it. It doesn't take much of your time or effort or uh, keep spreading the uh, word about this channel in the relevant group so that more subscribers do come in. And you have been doing this uh, for all that I, I know. So thank you for all the support. I'm very much indebted to you. So just to motivate me further to spend my time, which is very less, uh, the time that I give to this channel is out of uh, my passion for this particular thing. So just keep uh, patting my back so that I can go ahead. Okay, so all the excellent JE problems which are already there, uh, uh, including the practice problems that I gave, are being discussed in the Discord server of ours. So in case you are new, you don't want, don't know what is Discord server, how quickly things get resolved because of the students discussing amongst themselves there. Just watch this video tutorial. The link is in the i button above or the description below. You'll understand. Please do join there, and. Uh, just follow the rest of the series. And in case you are new, there are 220 plus videos by now at the time of this video recording. Watch three or four videos per day before your JE examination in 1.5 speed. That would be more than enough. And also follow the comments below. You'll have a lot of good doubts being asked uh, in this particular channel. Unlike other channels where the comments are usually the praise and all that, most of the comments, at least more than half of the comments in this channel are physics based. So you will start learning from the comment section also. So one at the description, please go and uh, explore. Second one is the comment section. So and always put a query. I try my best to answer them as much as possible, even on the old videos. So after all this, if you want to leave a like, please do that. It, it means a lot to me. Please do share this channel uh, with others, right? And please do subscribe in case you are watching it for the first time, okay? So thanks a lot and see you in the next one. I hope it is as soon as possible.